The next question we had, where's my notes? What is a hybrid histogram? Before I can tell you what a hybrid histogram is, I probably have to tell you how they evolved and how they came about in the evolution of how the optimizer works in Oracle. Here's an example that I've set up. I've created this fictitious table called orders. It's not part of the standard examples or anything. It's just one I created such that I can control actual distribution of values. You can see that we've got eight statuses and it reflects pretty much what would happen in a system where you can buy things. I've got a thousand new orders that haven't been touched by anything yet. Then they get assigned to someone um, to deal with or assigned to some process. And I imagine that'd be, very, that'd be a very quick thing. You get assigned and then someone starts working on the order. So very few people in the assigned category. Then they're in progress. I've got 4,000 orders. We're building things, constructing things, wrapping things, whatever. Whatever happens at, at retail places. And then the person that's finished constructing it says I'm done and it's processed. And very quickly, we try to get it shipped. So hopefully the number of wrote orders that are just staying as processed and therefore sitting there doing nothing is very low. Then they've been shipped out to customers. 5,000 people have then received their goods. And then we sort of complete, we mark that order as being completed. So we no longer have to deal with it ever. It might enter a warranty period, etc. And then finally we archive them off, never to be seen again, off to our data warehouse and, and off we go. So that's, I'm um, hopefully I've picked the data distribution there, which is roughly what we'd expect. There's our eight statuses. First thing we see is, oh, there's some skew there. And when we see skew, people panic and we think we've got to have histograms. So in 11G, I might choose to create a histogram. I've done for all columns size 15 because there's more, there's, there's not 15 values. As long as that columns number is larger than the number of distinct values, I'll get what's called a frequency based histogram. Now a frequency histogram doesn't require a lot of explanation. It's pretty much exactly what you would expect. We can store for each individual distinct value we can store the actual frequency distribution. So there's a thousand new, there's 10 assigned, there's 4,000 in progress. We know exactly how they are at the time of gathering stats. We know exactly how many there are. The way it's stored in the database is somewhat cryptic. You can see we have a, call, a view called user histograms. And the way it works is it's actually the endpoint number is sort of like a cumulative total. And so the delta between them is actually how we store the frequency distribution. So you can see there that for for n value of one for new, even though it says NEV, that's just part of the, the cryptic way we store character values in the um, histogram table. So we have a thousand for the frequency and a thousand for the endpoint number. For the second row of assigned, the endpoint number is 1010. And so how we work out the frequency of 10 is it's 1010 minus the previous value. So that's how we work it out. And as we move down, we have 4,000 in progress. We have three, um, pro sorry, three that are processed and so forth. The cool thing, with a frequency histogram is because we know the exact distribution of each value, when I do an execution plan, generally the numbers are gonna be bang on. In fact, if I do select star from orders where the status equals shift, you can see the estimate was 800 and the true value is 800. That frequency histogram is actually spot on. As we said, so far so good. What happens now though, if we want to have a histogram of lots and lots of different values? Now I can mimic this with my existing example by saying, what if I don't have enough buckets? So normally, if the number of distinct values is greater than 254 in Oracle 11, and I've put a star next, I'll come back for a second, then obviously there's a limit of that many buckets. If I got more than say 300 distinct values, I can't store an exact frequency histogram for every single value. There's too many of them that number's been lifted to, I think, 2000 in Oracle 12. I'm gonna mimic that now by saying, well, I've got eight distinct values, but I'm gonna say I'm only allowed to have six histogram buckets or, or ranges, so to speak. So I can't actually get eight distinct values into my histogram. What does Oracle do in Oracle 11? It creates a thing called a height balanced histogram. If we look at that same view, user histograms, we can see there's sort of this quite odd information now. We don't get the values one through eight anymore. We get new, which is one, six and received, seven complete, and eight have archived. Uh, two, three, four, and five seem to have disappeared. And the endpoint number is effectively something a bit cryptic as well. It no longer seems to reflect the frequency. The best way of describing it is by looking at, hopefully pictorially, we have six buckets, hence my terrible artwork, and we had to squeeze eight values into those six buckets. And if I just flip back, we have those endpoints 0, 1, 3, and 6. Jumping forward again, what we're essentially saying is, is that values 1 to 6 would all fit in one bucket in terms of the total number of values. 
and value sevens complete would occupy two of the six buckets, effectively two, uh, a third of the data, and the value eight of archive occupies three of the buckets or half of the data. So because we simply didn't have enough buckets to store an individual frequency, we've done our best with this thing called a height balanced histogram. Once you start not being able to store exact numbers, that's when things can get a bit risky when it comes to histograms. You remember there were actually 20,000 archived rows. The estimate came out at 19,000. It's reasonably good. When I look at completed though, there was 10,000 and this time we were over by a factor of 50%. It's a bit of a toss of a coin because this is effectively how it's working. If I've got 45,000 total rows in the table and I've only got six buckets, each bucket can give me information about 7,000 roughly rows. Archive being 20,000 values worked out pretty nicely. It was, it was almost three evenly sized buckets. So in terms of estimates, we're gonna get lucky in the sense that the estimate is going to be pretty close to actually the reality. When I look at the complete, the true value of complete was 10,000, which is one and a half buckets. And obviously the definition of half a bucket isn't stored in the data dictionary. You know, we assume that seven spans two buckets, not one. That's the best we can do. And so once we start getting into numbers spanning lots of buckets or not filling a bucket for lack of a better term, like the, seven, the value of seven there is, that's when our estimates start going askew. And in particular, once I look at a value that's not in the histogram at all, I have this value of two assigned, which was so small it didn't even fit in the histogram. It was all covered in that first bucket going from one up to six. We're miles off. There's only three values for two of a sign and the database estimates, we're going to get 1,200. If that goes into a join condition, for example, we're probably going to get a problem. If there's only three values, I probably want to use a nested loop to get three values and then index drive into a secondary table. If the database thinks I'm going to get 1,200, it's probably going to abandon a nested loop and go for a hash join. It's when you start getting height balanced histograms that those risks and those horror stories you hear about histograms start coming into play. Once you start getting histograms that can't accurately model your data, this is a slide I thought I'd put in just for a bit of fun. You know, the optimizer says, yep, I've got a histogram, height balance histogram for you, how can I help? And this is what people often think about of the, the optimizer when they have performance problems. So bucket spanning is gonna be dramas and bucket swallowing, where multiple different values are all swallowed up in one bucket are where your estimates can go off. So that's what we had in 11. Frequency and height balanced. What that means is if, you're, if you are gathering histograms, and this is an 11 or 12, you may as well do for all column size 254, you may as well pick the largest number possible because ideally you want to get that frequency histogram. If you've got 200 distinct values, you may as well have a perfect histogram. If you've got more than 254, you're going to get a height balanced histogram no matter what. So you may as well go 254 always if for those columns that you choose to have histograms on. So let's talk about 12C now, which is where hybrids came in. 12C, if you've got enough buckets, it's unchanged from 11. I've got eight distinct values. I ask for 15 buckets. I get a frequency histogram just as before. No change there. Let's now look at if I try six. So once again, I've got eight distinct values. And in 11, when I said six buckets, I got a height balance histogram and some problems. Now I get a new thing called a top frequency histogram in 12, which is pretty cool. If I look at the spread now, I've got my six buckets still, but I've actually still stored some accurate frequencies. For values one, three, five, six, seven, and eight, so a new in progress ship received, completed, and archived, I've got the exact frequencies there. Optimizing for those values is gonna be bang on, just as good as a normal frequency histogram. Obviously, there's a couple missing. Number two and number four, what happened to them? So here's our six buckets, we get exact values. For the other ones, we can do a little bit of an approximation here. There's 45,813 rows in my table and there's eight distinct values. I've managed to cover six of them with a frequency-based histogram and that added up to 45,800 rows. So the database can use that information to say, well, I've got 13 rows left over and two distinct values left over, so I'm expecting to see seven rows in each. So even though I haven't stored frequency histograms for those two small number of rows, I can actually do a reasonable approximation at them. And that's what it does. If I do what's the number of processed rows, the estimate was seven, the true value was three, I'm looking pretty good there. I'm not nowhere near that 1,200 rows I had with the height balance histogram. 
How does Oracle know when it can do this? It simply says, if the percentage of the top number of values is greater than the number of buckets minus one, so all, all bar one of the buckets times the number of rows. Let's do that in some simple mathematics. If I've got 12 buckets, that means that the 12 most frequent values have to consume more than 11 twelfths of the thousand rows that we've got. So we get top frequency, that's like the, the next step down. Ideally, I get a frequency histogram. If I can't get that, I'll try for a top frequency histogram. And what if that's not possible? What I've done now is taken my table and inserted a lot more values into it to make it fairly evenly distributed. You could make an argument here that I probably don't need a histogram at all. If all the rows are evenly distributed, archive there is probably the exception. I could probably get away with no histogram and Oracle is going to make a rough assessment. There's probably about 12,000 rows per value. And that would probably be good enough. And this is one of those examples where you might think, maybe I don't need a histogram at all. But if I force one, if I look at the distribution there, there's not sufficient skew such that we could do a top end frequency histogram. So what happens is you get this thing called a hybrid histogram. And that hopefully is going to help answer this question. I can't do a frequency. I can't do a top frequency. I'm going to do what's called a hybrid, which really is just an improved version of the height balanced histogram. So now there's a new column in user histograms called endpoint repeat count. And probably best if we describe that with a picture. What I'm doing now is, is I've got six buckets because I've got eight values trying to cram into six buckets. So I couldn't do frequency. I'm using hybrid. And what the hybrid stores is an additional piece of information saying that for the value I'm storing, so let's look at an example here, uh, the very last one, eight of archived. It says I've got 2,098 values in there, but the extra piece of information I'm storing is that 1,213 of them are for that particular value. So for the highest value in that bucket, which in this case is eight of archived, there's 2,098 2 values in the bucket which could span several things, but 1,200 of them are for that particular value, eight of archived. The reason that's useful, we'll see in the next slide, 2,098 occurrences, 1,200 are aft, which means there must be 885 between the previous value, which is six of received, which is the previous bucket, and less than this endpoint value. Now, in that case, we know there's only one thing between six and eight, and that's seven. But if there was several, it, the, the same logic applies. I'm getting better information from that one bucket because I know the perfect frequency histogram for one of the values in the bucket and all the rest fall into this, this sort of um, category of unassigned. So 800 rows are between six and eight. The nice thing with that is, is values no longer span a bucket. So the value of eight won't span a bucket. It'll simply have an endpoint repeat count. So hybrid histograms are like a slightly improved version of height balance histogram. Now, having said all that, let me wrap it up in a too long didn't read. Frequency histograms are probably going to make your queries optimized better. Top end frequency histograms are going to make your queries optimized better. Height balanced histograms in 11G are risky areas. That's where when you've got histograms, you need to take care. There's a good chance that the histogram may make things worse, might make things better, but you really need to have a good look at each on a case by case basis. Hybrid histograms, uh, an improved version of height balanced histograms, but still same thing. That's generally where your risk profile is going to lie, right? If you're having performance problems and the columns involved in the predicates have histograms on them, if they're frequency histograms, I think you'll be fine. If they're height balanced or hybrid, take a closer look. You may be better off looking at something like SQL plan management to lock the plans into place or removing the histogram altogether. So there we go, height balanced histograms.